state the principle of conservation of mechanical energy in what? So because we are stating the principle in 5.1, I'm assuming we can use the principle in 5.2. So let's go ahead and take a look. 5.2, use energy principles only to calculate the speed of the crate at point B. So let's go ahead and take a look at our creation statement and see exactly what is going on. So a crate of mass 18 cages initially at rest, slice down a frictionless slope from point A to point B. The crate then moves along a rough horizontal surface from point B towards point C. Point A is 3 meters above the horizontal surface. See the diagram below. So that is easy to see. What are we looking for? We are looking for the velocity or the speed of the crate at point B. We are interested at point B. So let's take a look. Here at point B, we have an unknown velocity. But here at point A, we have a velocity of 0 meters per second because initially it is at rest. At A, we have a height of 3 meters. And then at B, our height is 0. So clearly, we can use a conservation of mechanical energy here because our slope is frictionless, right? So if we apply that, we will have... Uh, the mechanical energy at point A being equals to the mechanical energy at point B. The mechanical energy at point A is just the kinetic energy at that point plus the potential energy. And then same is true with the mechanical energy at point B. Kinetic energy plus potential energy. So what is the kinetic energy at point A? We have a half. The mass is 18 kgs. But the velocity is zero because it is coming from rest plus the potential energy mass is still 18 gravitational acceleration 9.8 and then the height is 3 um, this is equals to a half the mass is 18 kgs and the velocity is what you're interested in plus the potential energy mass is 18 kgs gravitational acceleration 9.8 and then the height is zero at point B. So this is gonna give us zero, this right here. So we can move to this part. So what is 80 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by three? Uh, that is 590, well, 529 and not 90 something, 529.8. Two, and this is equals to eighteen over two, and that is nine v squared. This gives us zero. So let's divide both sides by nine. Five hundred and twenty-nine point two divided by nine, we get v. Well, v squared is equals to fifty-eight point eight. So taking square roots on both sides. We get V is equals to 7.67 meters per second. We can leave it at like that. Uh, we can leave it like that because we are only interested on the magnitude. So there we go. That is the speed at point B. Let's take a look at 5.3. So 5.3, we're supposed to state the work energy theorem in words. So one question and we have two definitions. Um, that is, um, you're very fortunate if you come across that in the examination. A constant frictional force of 40.6 newtons acts on the crate as it moves from point B to point C, to, uh, from point B towards point C. The crate comes to rest at point C. Okay. And then we stated the work energy theorem in 5.3. Uh, well, we don't have to talk about that. You guys, you know it by now. And then 5.4, use energy principles only to calculate the distance that the crate travel from point B to point C. So we need a free body diagram first for the forces acting on our crate from point B to point C. Obviously, we have the normal force resting on the surface and we have the weight as always. We don't have any force applied, we just have the frictional force. We know that the normal force is not going to do any work perpendicular to the displacement. Same is true with the weight. So, 
frictional force is the only force that is doing work on the object. So what are we going to have? We're going to have work net being equals to the change in the object's kinetic energy. So work net is just going to be the work done by the frictional force being equals to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So let's take a look. Work done by the frictional force, it will be FR multiplied by delta X um, multiplied by cos of 180 degrees, right? And then this is going to be equals to the final kinetic energy. Well, it comes to rest, so we have zero minus the initial kinetic energy, half mv squared. The initial at B, right? Because now we're taking, we are only considering the motion from point B to point C. That is the part of the motion we are considering. So FR, 40.6. So we have 40.6. Delta X is what we're interested in. Uh, cos of 180 is minus 1. So we have minus 1. This is equals to 0 minus a half. The mass is 18 kgs and the velocity there at point B is 7.67. So we have 7.67 and we square that. So we're going to have minus 40.6 delta X and that is, let me just drag this down. And that is equals to uh, minus F. Oh, well, let me just put that in my calculator. I don't have to simplify anything um so let me just do that real quick i'm getting minus 529.4601 so i'm gonna divide both sides by minus 40.6 i'm getting delta x being equals to 13.04 meters so there we go that is our delta x 5.4 what about 5.5 5.5 supposed to explain something here uh, let's just make sure that we answered what we were supposed to answer in 5.4 distance that the creed travel from point b to c okay that's fine so 5.5 the height of the track is now lowered to point the height of the track is now lower so that point a is at a vertical height less than three meters the same crit is again released from point a how will the distance now travel by the crit along the horizontal surface before it comes to rest compared to that calculated in 5.4 i think it is going to be smaller than it is going to be smaller than why is it smaller than it is smaller than because the initial velocity at point b will now be less if you lower point A, it will now be less. And if that initial velocity is now less, then the distance covered is also going to decrease. That is equation 5. I'm sure we're on the same page. Which video do you want me to do next? Let me know in the comments right now.